Welcome back team to General Chemistry Chapter 6 Equilibrium. We're going to start with 6.1 where we talk about the equilibrium. So let's get started. We have a reversible reaction eventually reach a state in which energy is minimized and entropy is maximized. The forward reaction is towards the products or to the right and the reverse reaction is towards the reactant or to the left. Chemical equilibria are dynamic, and that means that the reactions are still occurring just at a constant rate. So the forward reaction equals the reverse reaction, and they're kind of in that middle state. So moving on to the law of mass action. If the system is at equilibria at a constant temperature, then the following ratio is constant. And that's the equation there. So KEQ is the ratio of products to reactants at equilibrium with each species raised to its stoichiometric coefficient, and that's the equation there. So the capital letters are the element itself, and the lowercase letters are the stoichiometric coefficients. So I have an example here. What is the expression of the equilibrium constant for the following reaction? We have three moles of H2 plus N2, um, with a forward inverse reaction of two moles of NH3. And it's asking us, how do you write this expression? So remember the products go on top because it's two moles of NH3. We put to the power of two and the H2 would be our product. The three moles of H2 would be to the H2 concentration to the power of three. And then we have the concentration of N2 with the coefficient of 1 because there's only one mole there. So to simplify this, we can say that KEQ is equal to products over reactants. Good. All right, moving on to reaction quotient. And that's the measure of concentration of all reactants and products. And it's the same thing as the equilibrium constant, but just the KEQ is uh, flipped with the simple Q. And for the key concepts, I drew this simple diagram to kind of simplify all the information that we had. So the R represents reactants and P represents the products. So when R is higher than P, we have higher KEQ and a negative delta G value. That means it's spontaneous. And high reactants will give us where the KEQ is less than 1. And that helps initiate the forward reaction. When both reactants and products are at equal concentration, the KEQ is equal to Q, which was a reaction quotient, if you remember from before. Our delta G is equal to zero, and the KEQ value is approximately one, and that means they're at equilibrium. If the products, however, have a larger concentration, we'll have a higher Q value, and the delta G will be positive, where it's greater than zero. And the KEQ will be greater than one as well. And this would favor a reverse reaction. So this is a good handy diagram to kind of memorize and see how the forward and reverse reaction works with the equilibrium qu constant and the quotient. So moving on to 6.2, Le Chatier's principle. So if stress is applied to a system, the system shifts to relieve that stress and restore equilibrium. There are three main types of stressors. Now, if you add more reactants, it's going to shift to the right. And we can see that in the key concept diagram that we touched on before. If you increase products, you're going to shift to the left. Now, if you increase pressure and decrease the volume, it's going to shift towards the side with the fewer moles of gas. But if you increase the volume and decrease the pressure, so just flip those values, it's going to shift to the side with more moles of gas. And if you increase the temperature, so you add heat, it's going to help favor that forward reaction that we were talking about. So it's going to shift to the right. And if we decrease the temperature, we're removing heat, we're removing kinetic energy, the products will want to go back to their original state. So that will forward the reverse reaction. And then we move on to 6.3, kinetic and thermodynamic control. So in this, reactions may have both kinetic and thermodynamic products that can be regulated by temperature and pressure of a catalyst. 
Moving forward to thermodynamic products, so this requires an increase in free energy to reach the transition state, which then creates lower energy and more stable products. And it can form at higher temperatures with high heat transfer. It's a slower pathway, however, it's more spontaneous because it has a negative delta G value. For kinetic pathways, however, it requires low free energy to reach that transition state. But it will create a higher energy and less stable products and can form at lower temperatures with low heat transfer. And that's the end of chapter 6. I'll see you guys again for chapter 7. Take care.